Hello everyone! In this video I will be showing you how I managed to feed all my animals and how you can set up your own steady supply of food for around $50. As you can see here I have a 3 drawer storage cabinet. I got this one at my local Walmart for around 20 bucks, so it wasn't too bad. This is essentially my mealworm farm and each drawer will house a different variant of mealworm. For me, mealworms has been one of the easiest feeder insects to breed. The middle section will house the extra small to extra large size mealworms and even the beetles. This bottom drawer houses the superworms that I have to feed to the much larger animals and the top drawer will house the beetles and pupas that have formed from the superworms that will begin to start the new colony of superworms. Each row has a good layer of oatmeal and I will show you which brand I typically use. I like using the simple and cheaper great value old fashioned oats. I typically grab the 42 ounce container which will cost you around 4 bucks and you'll need 3 of these so 4 times 3 which comes out to around $12. Now you could grind it up to get much finer flakes but I like using a hole as is and you'll see why later on in the video. These guys will both live in and eat this substrate. So about once a week I throw in a good clump of salad into each section. It's always good to have a bit of variety. And remember what these guys eat is what your animals will be eating. So I don't want them really just surviving off of the oats. First I will show you how I go about setting up the area for my superworms. As you can see nothing fancy just a layer of oats and some cardboard. Specifically cardboard egg containers. Now I'm not incorporating the egg cartons into the cost because I usually get these free out of the trash or before they go into the trash I should say. If you get them out of the trash just make sure they don't come with anything extra or smeared onto them. I usually have a good amount of superworms in this thing but I've had a lot of mouths to feed this year so I am running a bit low. But I will show you how you can go about making more with the ones that you do have. Now of course you need beetles to make baby worms, but before you get beetles, you need these guys to turn into what is called a pupa. Superworms tend to only pupate when they are isolated, so I will show you how I go about doing that. Here we have a superworm inside a sauce cup and right next to it a regular sized mealworm. I did this so you can see the size difference between the two. These little sauce cups will act as an incubator for our worm. These I ordered off of Amazon and I was able to get a set of 100 for only $10. So all you do is grab a worm, put it in the cup, and cover it up. I just leave mine on this flat surface here and in around 10 to 14 days you'll get what is known as a pupa. And here's what they look like afterwards. These creepy looking alien things are the superworm pupa. And after another 10 to 12 days we get this, the beetle. So it takes typically about a month to go from superworm to a fully grown beetle. Which is why I recommend setting up multiple isolation cups with superworms so that way when they're all done you have a good amount of beetles ready to go. Now the superworm beetles I like to keep in the top drawer along with oatmeal and as you can see several pieces of stacked up egg carton. This will provide them a place to hide and also a place to lay their eggs. Since they're not worms anymore they don't bury themselves in the oatmeal so it's important we provide them with a good bit of shelter. Now to move on to the middle drawer. Here is where I house the normal size mealworms. In here we have all three stages of life, the mealworm, the pupa, and the beetles. These are the easiest ones to breed because unlike the superworms, these multiply very very quickly. I know some people like separating the beetles and pupas and worms separately, but it's perfectly fine to leave them all in the same bin. I've never had problems with the beetles or the worms trying to fight or even eat each other. And as you can see I have hundreds if not thousands of mealworms. Now depending on where you buy your mealworms from, sometimes manufacturers like to spray on this chemical that keeps their worms from evolving into beetles, thus keeping them from procreating. But I started with a 100 count cup from PetSmart and that only sent me back about $5. So considering how many I have now, I'd say that was a pretty good deal. Both superworms and mealworms tend to breed quicker in a warm and humid environment so be sure not to store them in a place where it gets too cold because otherwise they will just go into hibernation. 
I usually keep my room at around 73 degrees, so as you can see they do just fine in normal regular room temperature. Now this black stuff you see on the bottom is called frass, and this stuff makes a great fertilizer. I personally like adding some of it to my terrarium plants to give them a good bit of nutrients. I really like how sustainable this setup is and how nothing ever really goes to waste. Now as much as I'd like to say that my little setup was a success, I did end up running into a bit of a mishap. About a month after I set it up, I started noticing these little moths flying around. At first I assumed maybe somebody left the window open and they just came flying in from outside. But as time went on, I slowly started realizing that they were coming out from my little setup. So I started to do a bit of research as to why they were so attracted to my oatmeal in the first place. These here are Indian meal moths, or pantry moths as they are also known as. And what I found out was uh, a bit shocking to say the least. You might even say I opened up a different can of worms. I was shocked to find out that these guys weren't just looking for food, but they came from the food itself. Apparently a lot of oats and cereals have a high likelihood of there already being pantry moth eggs already in the product. And after doing a bit more research, I found that this is somewhat allowed, at least according to this article. But this is a CNN article from back in 2019, so who knows how much of it is exactly true. <laughs> but either way, you probably won't catch me eating any cereal or oatmeal anytime soon. But these guys aren't dangerous or poisonous. They're more of a nuisance than anything. There's more information out there on how you can get rid of them. But what I've done is cut the top off of an empty soda bottle, added some oatmeal and egg carton inside, and flipped the top of the bottle back into itself and glued the top together with some hot glue. Now with this little contraption here, the moths will be able to go in, but they won't be able to come out. As you can see, there's even a little dead one right here. But they are slow and very easy to catch with a tiny net. So I thought, hey, more free food, and ended up turning a problem into a solution by feeding these guys to my pets. Here I have a cup of extra small mealworms that I will feed to my smaller pets. And here's a regular sized one so you can see the size difference. I usually feed the extra small ones to my baby frogs here. You might remember these guys from my previous videos, but since they're pretty small they can't eat the larger regular size ones, so the tiny ones are perfect for them, including the moths. These guys aren't exactly a smart bunch, or even very good at hunting, so I usually have to move them to this smaller tank when it's time to feed. And these normal sized mealworms will be going to our more larger pets. Mealworms are a very versatile food. You can feed them to your amphibians, reptiles, and even some mammals. You can even feed using the beetles, but I try not to feed them these too much because they have a harder shell than the worm and because we kind of need them to keep the population going. Lil Dio here loves them. Always comes right up to me when he knows he's about to snack on some tasty mealworms. Although he doesn't always see them and I have to help him out a bit. In this last bit, I will explain to you why I like leaving the oats whole versus grinding them up into finer flakes. Instead of throwing out the oats, I use them to feed the ghost shrimp and small minnows that I have in some of my enclosures. This is a good substitute for if you ever run out of fish flakes or pellets. I do like to give them a more of a versatile diet, but I've never had any fish or shrimp get sick or even die from eating just the oats. And that concludes today's video. I hope you found today's video tutorial helpful and that you too are able to set up your very own sustainable and surprisingly affordable mealworm farm. This little setup here has saved me hundreds of dollars a month and I hope it does for you too. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe, it really helps out my channel. And this has been Reptile and More and I will see you guys on the next one.